How does this photo make you feel? What if I told you that this little girl is sitting on a pile of rubble in the Gaza Strip that the Israel Defense Forces bombed and destroyed during the recent 11-day conflict? On July 29th, the BBC ran a story entitled, Gaza Photographer Hopes Digital Art Boom Can Help Raise Aid Money. The article was written by BBC Arab Affairs editor Sebastian Usher and highlights a widely shared photo taken during the 11-day war during the IDF and the Gaza-based terror groups back in May of 2021. The article said, the photo of Celine holding a doll in the ruins of the tower block that was brought down by Israeli airstrikes next to her family home, which was also hit, clearly struck a chord. He says that he took the photo in order to renew a sense of hope for the future. How many hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of people do you think saw this photo and article and condemned Israel for their brutal act against civilians? There's just one problem. This was not Celine's home and the pile of rubble she's sitting on that belonged to the terrorist organization that also happened to be the one that attacked Israel. You're watching The Israel Guys. Welcome back to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of fake news, you should connect to the true and authentic stories of Israel. On May 11th, the IDF targeted the 13-story beachfront Hanadi Tower in the Gaza Strip after Gaza-based terrorist groups fired more than 600 rockets at civilian population centers in Gaza. According to the IDF press statement released afterwards, the high-rise housed multiple military units used by Hamas, including headquarters for military research and development, military intelligence offices, and more. A former Al Jazeera journalist who used to live in the same tower also verified the IDF's account. Nicole Johnston asserted that convicted terrorists released in the 2011 prisoner exchange deal with Israel were given apartments in the very same tower. She also wrote that during the year that she lived in the tower, she used to hear the police force in Gaza jogging in the streets below. She also said that they had a training ground that was located just a few blocks away from the tower. Following the Israeli strike, NBC News noted that the facility was controlled by the Palestinian Hamas movement. Forbes described it as a well-known building in the Gaza Strip that houses members of Hamas leadership. Unbelievably, the BBC themselves said in May that the tower housed, quote, an office used by the political leadership of Hamas. This means that the BBC knowingly misled the world when they posted the photo of Celine sitting on the pile of rubble. You may be asking yourself, however, did the IDF have the right to destroy this tower in the Gaza Strip? Isn't that a disproportionate use of force? Actually, yes. Under Article 24.1 of the 1923 Hague Rules of Air Warfare, it says, quote, aerial bombardment is legitimate only when directed at a military objective, that is to say an object of which the destruction or injury would constitute a distinct military advantage to the belligerent. Article 2 of the 1907 Hague Convention also allows the bombardment of, quote, military works, military or naval establishments, depots of arms or war material, workshops or plant which could be utilized for the needs of the hostile fleet or army, and the ships of war in the harbor. So that justifies Israel's destruction of the tower that housed the military terrorists of Hamas. What about the civilians though? What if this little girl actually lived next door to the Hanadi Tower? Does the IDF not care about her? Amazingly, there were zero casualties following the strike on the tower. How does the IDF accomplish this? You may not believe this, but while Hamas and other terrorist organizations knowingly and willingly put their civilians in harm's way, the IDF goes to great lengths to avoid harming innocent civilians. Two hours before the strike on the Hanadi Tower, an IDF representative contacted everyone in the area and told them to evacuate, despite knowing that this would give the terrorists plenty of time to escape taking their arms and equipment with them. Local sources confirmed that the IDF went even farther, proceeding with a preliminary knock on the roof tactic in which a non-lethal bomb is dropped, creating a loud explosion warning everyone in the entire vicinity that an actual strike is imminent. Palestinian journalists even shared footage confirming this report. Consequently, not a single casualty was reported following the demolition of the 13-story building in Gaza City. Let's review. The BBC knowingly used a staged photo of a little girl sitting on a pile of rubble in Gaza so that they could evoke your sympathy and cause you to place the blame squarely on Israel. The tower destroyed by Israel was actually controlled and lived in by Hamas, 
a terrorist organization that not only hates and attacks Israel, but also hates their own people, including this very same little girl. Why else would they place a tower and install military members of their terrorist organization in it right next to Celine's home? Unless they were hoping that the IDF would accidentally kill her when striking the tower. Unfortunately for them, but fortunately for Celine and her family, there were zero casualties, which means that the IDF cares way more about the children of Gaza than Hamas does. The question is, shouldn't this be labeled as child abuse on the part of the BBC and the Hamas terrorist organization? When will the media be held accountable for their lies and distortions that are often portrayed when it comes to Israel? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, tune out the negativity and fake news and tune in to what is actually happening right here in the land of Israel. We'll see you next time right here at The Israel Guys. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. Two quick things before you go. One, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any more of our content. Secondly, if you wanna help us produce more stories and authentic truth straight from Israel's heartland, you can do so at patreon.com slash the Israel guys or at our very own website. It's the Israel guys.com. Both links are in the description below.